Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of geometry. We're going to try to solve the classic problem of two different objects moving in space and trying to get them to intercept each other. Now the interesting thing in command is if actually this were an interceptor and I pressed F1 and clicked on this guy, that calculation could be done before you. But let's say I want to go ahead and put a bunch of units together and like kind of do a co-support or something along those lines. So now we've got to figure this one out. So this is basically going to be an exercise in proportionality. We know that our 172 travels at 120 knots, and we know that our Boeing 737 here travels at 434 knots. So we know that every little mile that this one travels, this guy is basically going to travel, if you want to think about it another way, 434 divided by 120, 3.616, which simply means for every mile, like I said, he's traveling, we need to bring him back a factor of 3.61. So you're sitting there going, okay, so that kind of makes sense. But the problem is you're working in uh, three-dimensional space here. So that makes it a little bit more difficult in order to process. Your initial brain's going to say, so if we just take uh, this and we do the proportionality, 150, it's going to mean you're going to intercept right about here, which is actually fairly accurate. But remember, as we start to take the position along this line, we're increasing the distance this one has to travel. So uh, nobody said that this would be an easy problem. We just said that this would be an interesting problem, like I like to say. Now, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, if you want to do the estimation method, which works really, really fast, simply work out the proportion of the speeds, and that's where you need to be on the proportion of the course. So in this case, like I was just doing a mathematically a second ago, 120 out of 434 would simply mean about a quarter of the way, about a third of the way. So if you took the total distance here, which is about 150 miles, and you measured about a quarter of the way, let's see, 150 miles, uh, let's see if we want to divide that by four. This is where you have it up with like 40 calculators. That's 37.5 miles. So if we moved up here at about 37.5, this would be about the intercept point. The problem is, is because you're moving at an angle, you've actually increased the distance that you have to travel. So whenever you do that, you always have to put a little bit of extra fudge in there to actually go ahead and compensate for this incredible amount of angle. Now, if you want to do some really fast and really, really nasty sine and cosine action, you can get this pretty precise, but this is a great rule of thumb. So I'm simply going to take this, estimate to be about, let's call it right there. So like I said, that's going to be about that proportion of speed. So now we're moving his distance at the proportion of speed. Obviously, if you're a little bit slower, you have to work this the other way around. So if I unpause this, uh, let's see how we did here. Conk. Almost perfect, almost perfect. So you can see the basic technique actually works really, really well as far as estimating. Now, if you want to get a little bit more accurate, like I said, you're gonna to have to bust out a little crack calculator. And we're basically gonna to have to zero out the speeds and work out the exact ratio between left and right. Now that's pretty fancy, but it's not anything we need to do. So let's go ahead and I'll reset our scenario real quick. And let's go ahead and try it in the other direction. So now we know that uh, this is going to be a lot more challenging of a problem to solve because this is a much faster aircraft. So you're going to run into a situation where now we have to increase the distance along this line by the proportion of how much slower we are. So if you remember, 120 out of 434 is 27. So we're doing 1 over 0 0.27. And you can see I need to travel 3.7 times the distance in order to intercept him. So in this case, we've actually run into a situation where we can't intercept this aircraft. It's simply moving too quickly. If we left it, however, at, let's call it uh, 200, 250 knots. Actually, it would be even nicer. We'll do 240 knots. Now we have a possible chance of intercepting it because we're not going to basically, you know, we can't keep up otherwise. So now we know that this guy is going exactly double of our speed, which means if we're going to try to intercept it, whatever the total distance is, let's see, our total distance here is going to be, uh, let's see here, 147 nautical miles, is going to work out to be 300 nautical miles where our actual intercept point is. Now, remember, like I was saying before, let's go ahead and mark out 300 miles right here. It's going to be about right there. When we move this, we've actually increased the distance that we have to travel. So we're not traveling 300 nautical miles here. We're actually traveling significantly more. So you want to add a little bit extra to that particular point. So let's go ahead and unpause. Actually, first we've got to grab our boing, and we have to actually order it to go all the way down here. Otherwise, we're not going to see this. So now let's go ahead and see what this looks like like this. <laughs> You could see that our Cessna is really struggling to keep up. So in this case, uh, that was never going to happen. No matter how much lead we'd have, that extra distance imposed upon us by that increased angle absolutely blew us away. We literally could never possibly catch up to him. So it's an important thing to keep in mind that if you're trying to chase down an SR-71 or something like that, you have to be there incredibly earlier. The most common use of this technique, by the way, is if you're doing a little bit of submarine work. You know, how far ahead of the convoy do I need to be? In which case, I say, if you're exceeding 45 degree angle to try to get away from the convoy, you almost never
never going to be able to catch it. So hopefully this technique is uh, helpful for you. Again, I use it. Again, it's just back of the envelope stuff. I'm not going to pull out a graphing calculator or anything and work it out. You can work it out if you want. It just gets a little complicated. It's also worth noting, and I'll show this to you real, real fast. I'll go ahead and reset the scenario. That command actually does this automatically for you. So let's go ahead and uh, change my scenario up just a teeny tiny bit, just to prove my point. Let's go get ourselves everybody's favorite, F16CM, BLK52. Oh, 41, what's that? I never heard of that before. That one looks good. Let's go ahead and get an AMD, it looks good. Poke it, just flying in that general direction. And let's go ahead and get ourselves, we'll add her into the side real quick, just for purposes. Go ahead and say postures, we'll say hostile. Looks pretty good to me. Switch to the other team. Let's give them an SR71, just to be annoying. Wow, I didn't realize you could put an AIM-120 in an SR-71. That hurts my feelings a little bit. All right, we're going to order him to go down this direction. And, you know, to make this scenario a little bit easier for us, we're going to get my favorite radar here. We'll go get ourselves a TIPS-43, TPS-43E. That's the one. Uh-oh, apparently I'm putting it in the water. Who knew? Oh, well, that's Florida for you, right? That looks good. TIPS-43E, press OK, turn it on. And I just want to show you real quick that fortunately, uh, you don't usually have to do this for the purposes of identifying enemy aircraft. So if I grab my F-16 and I click on this guy like that, he will actually, if you order him, of course, tell him to ignore your plotted course. So he will actually automatically, if you watch him, see how he's moving to intercept automatically? So if I actually would go back to my SR-71 and go, hey, hey, watch this. Dunk. <laughs> this has got to be a little one-sided. Watch what the F-16 actually does. He will automatically uh, compensate for that change of speed. See how he's leading him? Do you see how he immediately turned the other way? Now notice my F-16 is now facing this way for the purposes of intercepting that aircraft. There it goes. No, 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 no. Don't do it early. Don't do it early. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. Will it connect? And you can see the missiles automatically lead as well. Nice. We got him. So hopefully this video is helpful as far as uh, solving your lead problems. It's just like a quick little tip that I thought people would enjoy.